Hi YouTube, it's Joshua Miles and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be yet another solved true crime case for my Curious Case series. And it's actually a case that I had never heard of until very recently. This episode has been heavily inspired by Cold Fusion TV's uh, video on this case. I've left a link in my sources if you wanted to go check out his video. I also have to thank the creators of the Missing Crypto Queen podcast on the BBC Sounds app alongside their relevant articles um, as their research, really in-depth research, um, has really helped in putting the pieces together in this case. You can find sources for all the information presented in this video in my description box down below. And without further ado, let's delve right into this case. On the 7th of October 2017, 37-year-old Dr. Ruja Ignatova, who had a PhD in European private law, was due to take the stage at a conference in Lisbon, Portugal, but she failed to show up at the event. Dr. Ruja was well known amongst her peers for always being very, very punctual, so her lack of showing up at this event set off red flags. Her colleagues contacted their head office to see if there were any delays or anything like that, but what they found out shocked them to the core. The head office confirms that she had left her headquarters in Sofia, Bulgaria, to take a plane to the event in Lisbon though Dr. Ruja never arrived. Rumours immediately began to speculate that she had been kidnapped or even killed by her competitors. At the time of her disappearance, she had a worth of between 5 and 15 billion US dollars. But what happened to Dr. Ruja? Why did this happen? And who exactly is responsible? To understand and answer those questions, we first have to take a look at Dr. Ruja's history, and we have to take a look at how she accumulated so much wealth. In a case of international fraud, FBI investigations, and billions of dollars going missing, let's discuss the case of Dr. Ruja Ignatova and her company, OneCoin. Dr. Ruja Ignatova was born on Friday the 30th of May 1980 in the capital city of Bulgaria, which is Sofia. At the age of 10, Ruja emigrated with her family to Schramberg, Germany. She studied hard at school and her hard work paid off as she eventually went to study law at the University of Konstanz, which was located in Konstanz, Germany where she would eventually go on to complete her PhD. Simultaneously to her law studies, she also studied economics. She became a research assistant for a year between the years 2002 and 2003, and even went on to study at the University of Oxford, graduating from there in 2004 before returning to the University of Konstanz. Her dissertation was called chances and perspectives of the reform of the jurisdiction at the place of performance, and it was published in 2005, earning her a PhD in European private law. Dr. Ruja began work as a management consultant in autumn of 2004, as her PhD studies were coming to an end. On the 23rd of June 2014, the web domain onecoin.eu was registered, and thus Dr. Ruja's brand new company was born. Not two years later, Dr. Ruja would walk onto the stage at Wembley Arena in front of an audience of thousands of people who cheered her name. Then, the year following that, Dr. Ruja would disappear without a trace. Her company OneCoin, which she founded with a man called Sebastian Greenwood, was dubbed to be the next 
big cryptocurrency. You might have heard the term cryptocurrency being thrown around in the media in recent years, especially when discussing the infamous Bitcoin. But for some further context, a cryptocurrency is a digital or virtual currency that is secured by cryptography, which makes it nearly impossible to counterfeit or double spend. The key value is that, unlike traditional banks, cryptocurrency is decentralized, which means that they are effectively immune to government interference or manipulation. To achieve this, a cryptocurrency will use blockchain technology, which you can think of as a gigantic book, which everyone who has the cryptocurrency has a copy of. When a transaction is made, everybody who has a copy of that book receives an update, and it is verified against everyone's records using some very complex and complicated mathematics. This means that nobody is able to manipulate or change the blockchain, regardless of whether it's the cryptocurrency's owner or a government party. OneCoin claims to be the most transparent cryptocurrency on the market, though it's important to note that unlike most cryptocurrencies, OneCoin's blockchain was private and closed, which effectively means that people who were investing in OneCoin weren't receiving a book which contained all the transactions, they were just relying on OneCoin's privately operated blockchain. This meant that it could be likely that OneCoin could manipulate their blockchain as it wasn't being verified with anybody else, which goes against the basic principles of a cryptocurrency. To circumvent this, OneCoin claims that their blockchain was audited regularly by a third party. Dr. Ruja and her team went to dozens of events to promote their brand new cryptocurrency, which they claimed to have fixed Bitcoin's flaws, making it better than Bitcoin. And the company quickly began to take off. To join OneCoin, you have to go to their website and purchase one of five packages. These packages allow you not only access to use OneCoin, but also grants you access to OneCoin's affiliate scheme, though you do have to pay an extra $30 to access the affiliate scheme. The packages initially started at 100 euros for the starter package, going all the way up to 5,000 euros for the Tycoon Trader package. And the packages would give you access to educational courses, which contains information on how to use your investment wisely. With the rise of the popularity and the value of Bitcoin going from being worth just a few dollars to thousands, people from across the world were quick to jump on OneCoin from the beginning so they wouldn't miss out. They wanted to invest early so they could reap the benefits later on. OneCoin was dubbed to be the Bitcoin killer, and Dr. Ruja claims that it would bank the unbanked. Their affiliate program allowed you to earn 10% commission from everybody that you referred to OneCoin, meaning that if they purchased a basic 100 euro package, you would earn 10 euros as your share in that. But if they purchased the bigger 5,000 euro package, you would earn 500 euros. The affiliate program gets a bit more complex as you, the people that you refer I refer more people, you get more shares and more cuts from that, but I thought that discussing that particular program is far too boring and far too complicated for the purpose of this video. This affiliate program was further incentive for people to begin joining the OneCoin service, which by the way was an invitation only service, so you could only get access to OneCoin if you had been referred. With leaked reports showing that in the first six months of 2016, the British public invested almost 30 million euros into the company at a rate of 2 million euros a week. And those figures were from before Dr. Ruge's Wembley appearance. And it's highly likely that following her Wembley appearance, there was a massive spike of investments. A woman called Jen McAdams from Glasgow, Scotland, was one of these investors. She had been told about OneCoin by a friend who sold it to her by saying that it was an unmissable investment opportunity. Jen joined a OneCoin webinar through a link that her friend had sent her 
and just one hour later she had already invested a thousand euros. The package which she bought not only came with the educational content but it also awarded her 10,000 tokens and these tokens could then be used to trade for other currencies such as euros on the one exchange. The one exchange being a one coin trading platform that one coin operated. Jen was able to see the value of the one coins for which she had invested on the back office portal that she had access to and not even a week later she invested a further 5,000 euros into the scheme. She watched as her one coin investment began to grow in value over time with her initial investment now now being worth over a hundred thousand euros. Jen jumped at the opportunity to refer her family and friends to OneCoin and in total her and her family and friends invested over 250,000 euros, a quarter of a million euros. Billions of euros were being invested across the world with everyone jumping at the opportunity to invest early and reap the benefits later. And it wasn't as if Dr. Ruja didn't have the background to back up her claims. She had even appeared on the front cover of Forbes magazine in Bulgaria. Dr. Ruja's conferences and events where she would promote OneCoin were attended by the masses despite having to pay money to get a ticket and at these events people would chant OneCoin over and over again. Come on, come on guys, take some energy. One coin, one coin, one coin. They even had their own hand symbol that they would use to identify other one coin investors. People were practically worshipping Dr. Ruja, and if anybody had any negativity against one coin or skepticism, they were told to view those people as haters and as spreading propaganda against OneCoin. You can see how easy it is to draw a comparison between OneCoin and a cult. However, cracks in what appear to be an amazing and life-changing investment opportunity began to appear. At the start of October 2016, John Jacker, who is a blockchain expert, was contacted by a recruitment agency. The recruitment agency told John that a cryptocurrency startup in Bulgaria was looking to recruit a chief technical officer. The new chief technical officer would be given an apartment, a car, and an annual salary of £250,000. Curious as to what the job of chief technical officer would entail, John inquired as to what exactly he would be doing. The recruitment agency replied saying, first of all, they need a blockchain. They don't have a blockchain. That set off massive flags for John as this was apparently a startup cryptocurrency company that didn't have a blockchain. And so he asked the recruitment agency what the name of the company was. The agency replied by saying OneCoin. Needless to say, he turned down the job offer. This meant that OneCoin didn't have a blockchain and was, in fact, not a cryptocurrency. So what exactly was going on behind the scenes? Jen McAdam, who had along with her family and friends invested over 250,000 euros into OneCoin, had been contacted by a stranger. The stranger was cryptocurrency enthusiast Tim Curry. Jen and Tim then had a Skype call which quickly turned into a shouting match. Tim struck on a few key points here, but let's first take a look at his allegations that Dr. Ruja is actually a convicted criminal. In 2009, the Volterhoven foundry filed for bankruptcy, but all was not lost for the foundry and its some 137 employees, as in April of 2010, Dr. Ruja Ignatova and her father bought the firm and allegedly contributed a substantial sum to keep the foundry afloat. Immediately, the employee counts was reduced from 137 to just 80, which meant that those 80 employees quickly became overworked and overstressed. Interestingly, their Christmas and holiday pay was cancelled, removed, they, they, they didn't have those benefits anymore and they were also being asked to work an extra 14 and a half hours without pay. One employee told the press, the firm is better off than ever before but the owner takes money out, doesn't pay supply invoices, doesn't take care of the garbage, there are no new filter bags, 
even the ones that were promised to customers. Then, in early January of 2012, the foundry was sold to a new owner. But not even four days later, the new owner filed for bankruptcy. After extensive investigation, it was determined that Dr. Ruja Ignatova, along with her father, had stolen more than 1 million euros from the foundry and then vanished. A warrant was issued for their arrest, and upon their arrest, they would be charged with fraud. Dr. Ruja Ignatova received a 14-month suspended sentence for fraud. In the weeks following Jen McAdams' Skype conversation with Tim Curry, Tim sent her emails with links to videos and articles of how exactly cryptocurrencies work. He also introduced Jen to John Jerker, who told her that OneCoin didn't even have a blockchain. After the heart-wrenching realization that she had fallen victim to a scam, and that she'd persuaded her friends and family to fall victim to the same scam, Jen contacted one of the OneCoin leaders in the group that she was in. After a lot of persistence, she finally discovered that the OneCoin blockchain was actually just a SQL database. What this effectively means is that the owner of the SQL database can just go in and change and manipulate the values as and when they please. OneCoin didn't have a blockchain. OneCoin's value was being artificially inflated by its employees. Jen's money and her family and friends money was lost. You see, they could train their OneCoins on the One Exchange for Euros, but the one exchange had substantial limitations on how much you could trade a day, and only people who purchased the most expensive packages were allowed access to it. By this point, you could purchase a package worth over a hundred thousand euros, and frequently, those who managed to get access to the one exchange, their transactions would expire or fail to go through. The OneCoin exchange shut down without any warning in January of 2017. The investors began to grow concerned about the lack of usability and accessibility to the One Exchange, and so it was deemed that at the Lisbon Portugal event, Dr. Ruja would reopen the One Exchange to everyone, and finally investors could begin to reap their rewards. But as we know, Dr. Ruja never showed up to the event. She simply vanished. Along with an estimated 15 billion US dollars that had been shifted through offshore companies and accounts, making the money practically impossible to trace. Her supporters and fans, brainwashed by OneCoin, were adamant that she had been taken or kidnapped or even killed by the big banks who saw Dr. Ruja as a threat to their business and believing that they murdered or kidnapped her to get her out of the way. Though, I think you and I can quite clearly see what's gone on here. The OneCoin boat had begun to sink, and with the allegations that the entire affair was a scam, Dr. Ruja simply jumped ship. You see, OneCoin wasn't just a fake cryptocurrency, it was actually a multi-level marketing scheme, or a pyramid scheme. The affiliate program and the exclusive access, along with the necessity to buy one of their packages before you could trade one coin, screamed multi-level marketing from the get-go. Dr. Ruja's solid credentials and her talents in marketing and selling one coin to the general public made a lot of people overlook these simple and basic red flags. She had manipulated millions of people from all walks of life and from a wide range of different countries into handing over their hard-earned money to her scam company. They handed over billions of dollars, which she then shifted into offshore accounts. And she'd not done it alone, she'd actually enlisted the aid of several key players in the multi-level marketing world. As we discussed earlier, the man that started OneCoin with Dr. Ruja was called Sebastian Greenwood. Sebastian had previously been involved with a now defunct scam cryptocurrency called Bitcoin and another scam multi-level marketing company called Prosper Inc. Along with two other people, Sebastian had defrauded investors out of 50 million US dollars. And the craziest thing, according to some sources, 
Dr. Ruja was actually the treasurer for Bitcoin. The president of OneCoin was a man called Nigel Allen, who had previously scammed thousands out of their money through a multitude of different companies. It further began to emerge that the educational packages that OneCoin sold to its investors were actually plagiarized from several other sources, and their website and backend portals were almost identical clones of another smaller cryptocurrency, though this cryptocurrency was a real cryptocurrency which had a blockchain not a fraudulent fake one. Interestingly, according to OneCoin's official Wikipedia page, authorities across the world were very much aware that OneCoin was a scam, with the Financial Supervision Commission in Bulgaria issuing a statement on the 30th of September 2015 informing potential investors that the activities related to the acquisition, trading and payment of OneCoin are not regulated by the applicable European and national capital markets legislation. Immediately following that statement being published, OneCoin seized all their operations in Bulgaria and opened several new accounts, bank accounts, abroad in different countries in an attempt to circumnavigate the attention given by the Bulgarian Financial Supervision Commission. Most notably, they opened an account at the Bank of Africa, which was an account, the only account, that stayed continuously open throughout their operations, as loads of their other bank accounts in different countries were being closed down by the government and authorities. Though, on the 15th of November 2016, the Bank of Africa closed OneCoin's account due to fraudulent activity. Numerous different governmental organizations issued statements about OneCoin, accusing it of being a pyramid scheme. Most notably, in December of 2016, the Chinese government arrested several members of OneCoin and investors and seized $30.8 million worth of assets. On the 23rd of April 2017, the Indian police force arrested 18 people for attempting to hold a OneCoin conference, a conference in which they would recruit further investors. The Indian authorities launched a massive investigation into OneCoin and recovered 3.77 million US dollars, though 11.52 million US dollars had been transferred out of company accounts before the Indian authorities were able to get to it. The Indian authorities launched a special OneCoin task force in order to track down and arrest more people in connection to the OneCoin scam. On the 16th of June 2017, OneCoin published a document stating that they were actually licensed by the Vietnamese government. However, the Vietnamese government were quick to issue a statement saying that this document that OneCoin had published was a complete forgery. Interestingly, on the 10th of July 2017, the Narvai Mumbi police in India filed a charge sheet against several of the members and investors that they had arrested earlier that year along with filing charges against Dr. Ruja Ignatova. The charge sheets named just shy of 30 people. Theories and speculation began to circulate that the criminal underworld was somehow associated with OneCoin. I mean, after all, grossing and scamming billions of dollars is bound to attract the attention of some very shadowy groups. John Jacker who was the blockchain expert who turned down the job at OneCoin, had been exposing OneCoin as a fraud very publicly. But that exposing didn't come without some very serious death threats from some very shady people. According to information that John had found out, Dr. Ruja had never intended for OneCoin to become as big as it did. And once OneCoin had begun to bring in tens of millions of dollars in revenue, some particular influential and shady groups of people made it impossible for Dr. Ruja to seize operations. According to John, Dr. Ruja had become so scared that she decided to skip. There are allegations of some very influential people associated with OneCoin, but who exactly John is unable to say for fear of his life. On the 6th of February 2018, the NYSD court filed a sealed indictment on the order of the US Marshals against Dr. Ruge's business partner, Sebastian Greenwood. The indictment listed five charges, 
one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud, one count of wire fraud, one count of conspiracy to commit money laundering, one count of conspiracy to commit securities fraud, and one count of securities fraud. In November of 2018, Sebastian Greenwood was apprehended and arrested by the Thai authorities and was sent back to the United States to await trial. After Dr. Ruja had vanished, her brother Konstantin Ignatova had taken control of operations for the company OneCoin. Crazily, OneCoin continued operating after Dr. Ruja vanished. On the 6th of March 2019, Konstantin was arrested at the Los Angeles airport and was charged with conspiracy to commit wire fraud as he was about to board a flight back to his hometown, Sofia, Bulgaria. That charge carries a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison. Dr. Ruja was also charged in absentia for wire fraud, securities fraud, and money laundering. Constantin signed a plea deal on the 4th of October 2019, which granted him immunity for all charges brought against him in connection to OneCoin, besides any tax evasion related charges. The plea deal also indicates that Constantin, in his cooperation, will reveal the identities of several key players who have been sending death threats um, and threatening his family and friends, people who may use violence against him and his family. This would make him eligible to apply for the US's Witness Protection Program, which would grant him a brand new identity, though he still faced prison sentences of up to 90 years for tax-related charges. The sentencing for Constantin was due to take place on the 8th of April this year, 2020, though it was adjourned to the 8th of July, 2020. Constantin had agreed to fully cooperate with the authorities, and is believed that the adjourning of his sentencing was due to this cooperation. He also testified in the trial of a US lawyer called Mark Scott, who was accused of rooting around 400 million US dollars out of the United States in an attempt to conceal who exactly owned the money and what exactly the source of the funds was. Mark Scott, who was a part of the OneCoin operations, faced two charges, one count of conspiracy to commit money laundering and one count of conspiracy to commit bank fraud, he has pleaded not guilty on both charges. Interestingly, in Constantin's testimony in Mark Scott's trial, details about Dr. Ruja's life have emerged. According to an article from the BBC, Dr. Ruja had been living in her hometown of Sofia, Bulgaria in the lead up to her disappearance. She had told her brother Constantin that the critics of OneCoin were haters and that she was growing very, very tired of it. She also told him that she was afraid that somebody close to her was about to give her up to the FBI. Further, she had told him that she had gotten hold of a big passport and asked him to purchase plane tickets to Vienna, Austria and then to Athens, Greece. Constantin claims to have not had contact with Dr. Ruja since her disappearance and he claims to have even hired a private investigator to try and track her down, but to no avail. Mark Scott currently faces a 50-year prison sentence for the charges brought against him, which the judge states the prosecution has overwhelming evidence against him for, and he would be stripped of his attorney license. Despite all these arrests and charges and allegations, people continue to invest in OneCoin, and the OneCoin company continues its operations. Though if you try to go to OneCoin's website today, uh, a message will pop up saying that it is a scam. Um, protections have been put in place, thankfully. It also emerged that the Bulgarian Forbes cover, which featured Dr. Ruja Ignatova as Businesswoman of the Year, was faked. She had been in that issue, but only on a paid, full-page advertisement buried deep within the magazine. The team behind the Crypto Queen podcast on BBC Sounds uncovered a heartbreaking story from Uganda about a man who had invested into the OneCoin scheme. According to the BBC article, which I've linked in my sources, 22-year-old Daniel Leonhard in 2016 scraped together 700,000 Ugandan shillings, approximately 200 US dollars, so that he could buy the OneCoin starter package. Daniel had 400,000 shillings saved, though he still needed the extra 300,000 shillings to make up the difference. So Daniel took the three last goats that his family had raised and sold them 
to make up the difference. But as we know, one coin is a scam, and this meant that Daniel had effectively thrown away the last money that he and his family had to invest into the Get Rich Quick scheme, believing that it would transform their lives. One coin had given a promoter in Daniel's area a brand new car to impress new recruits, and this promoter had been told to go prey on the farmers as they had money in their pockets. People in the area sold their cattle, they sold their land, and in some cases even sold their houses. Some of the kids are at home, sitting without going to school, some don't have anywhere to sleep, some are running because they got loans from a bank, some are hiding, some are divorced. Sadly, Daniel has been unable to inform his mother of the truth of what happened to their money and the facts that they had been scammed. Daniel's family had been saving their money so that they could purchase a May store so that Daniel could stop working in the fields and start working in this May shop. But Daniel had insisted and persuaded his family that investing in OneCoin was a much more lucrative opportunity. This story is one of many heartbreaking stories of the people that have been directly impacted by the OneCoin scam. But where exactly is Dr. Ruja Ignatova and what do we know about her life since she went missing? Many people believe that she underwent facial reconstructive surgery to avoid being detected by the authorities and to evade capture. We know that in 2016, prior to her disappearance, she did give birth to a daughter. Her husband, or ex-husband, I was unable to confirm whether they were still together, or whether, whether they were divorced, whether that div alleged divorce was just an attempt to throw people off the tracks. Her husband lives in Frankfurt, Germany, and works as a lawyer. Could Frankfurt be where Dr. Ruja is hiding? We might not find out for a long time. If she has in fact undergone facial reconstructive surgery, then the chances of finding her decreases tenfold. The BBC investigative team behind the Crypto Queen podcast tried to track her down, but to no avail. Here's what their article covering the disappearance of Dr. Ruja said. They had enlisted the aid of a private investigator who is infamous for tracking down missing people, and he had provided them with the information that when several waiters in Athens were shown photographs of Dr. Ruja, they claimed to have remembered seeing her early in 2018, which was after her vanishing act. When Georgia and I, Georgia and I being the two people behind the Crypto Queen podcast, called them ourselves to check, they confirmed it. So it seems Ruja is still alive and is able to visit a European capital without fearing arrest. Another lead came our way when we paid a visit to a bizarre one coin beauty pageant in Bureaucrest. It's as glitzy as you would expect. Men were drinking champagne from the bottle. Everyone was eyeing us in a way that made us feel very uncomfortable. We soaked up the atmosphere, cheered the British contestants, and then left. But later, we heard that we might have been in the presence of Dr. Ruja, that she was there, in the same room, right in front of our noses, except now, with plastic surgery, so she is harder to spot. From either Greece or Romania, Dr. Ruja could be extradited to the United States. If it is true that she was in fact in these countries earlier this year, she probably now has a fake identity. Even the most obscure entry or innocuous comment on a forum is usually saved somewhere, and with enough digging can be found. You've heard of Google, but there are several other search engines that specialize in this. So we started to unearth previous addresses, known friends, old phone numbers, anything that could help us in our search. We already knew that Dr. Ruja spent some of her childhood in Scrum southern Germany. We had also visited the town of Weiterhofen in Bavaria, not far away, where she and her father bought a steelworks around a decade ago, an episode that led her being tried for fraud. While in Weiterhofen, we learned that she had a German husband, a lawyer for the well-known firm Linklaters. But we were still surprised when, during our internet searches, Frankfurt started appearing over and over again. It wasn't a place we'd previously thought of looking. There were several old addresses in the Frankfurt area, ones she'd posted in forums many years ago, or were associated somehow with old telephone numbers of hers. Then we started looking at some old photos of Ruge 
adventure and spotted one friend who appeared with her all the way back in 2011. And that friend was visiting the richest neighborhood in Frankfurt in summer this year. From a tiny fragment of a poster advertising a tennis tournament, an expert identified the park in which one photograph was taken. Armed with a microphone and several photographs of Dr. Ruger, we headed off to Frankfurt and searched old addresses and gated neighborhoods said to be the most expensive in Germany. A couple of people looked at the photographs and paused for a long time, raising our hopes, but then said they didn't recognize her. A postman thought he recognized the name, but couldn't be sure. We called the lawyer who is, or was, married to her, but he didn't want to talk. Did we get close to her? Could she really be hiding out in the heart of the EU? We don't know. Frankfurt probably isn't the only place she goes. It might be one of several places, including perhaps Dubai and Russia. Then, a few days later, we received a call from a trusted source we cannot identify. He told us that we were right. Frankfurt is indeed where she spends much of her time. But we need to keep going. We needed to find the house. You will find her, he said. You must dig deeper. She would have known that you were looking for her, he added and she would have laughed at us. Dr. Ruja has likely used her enormous wealth to bribe the people around her to conceal her true identity, and has probably hired a team of experts so that when people come looking for her, she'd know. We can only hope that the relevant authorities can track her down, arrest her, and charge her with the horrific fraudulent crimes that she has committed. She's not only responsible for ruining the lives of Jen McAdam and her friends and family and Daniel, but millions and millions of people across the planet. Those people who fell victim to this scam have likely had their relationships and friendships with friends and family severely tarnished or even ended as a direct result of OneCoin. Some reporters speculate that due to the sheer amount of money invested into the OneCoin scheme, and with reports that many, many people took out big bank loans to invest into OneCoin, it's highly likely that there has already been or there will be suicides as a direct result of OneCoin. I find it particularly interesting that Dr. Ruger's brother claims that there are some some very dark influential people involved in the operation of OneCoin. And I also wouldn't be surprised if there was an involvement of a criminal gang. I doubt you'd believe me if I told you that I've only scraped the surface of the case of OneCoin in this video. There is so many more details, there is so much more to be said, but if I were to talk about it, this video would end up being three or four hours long. The one coin rabbit hole is a hole that I implore you to jump down and conduct your own research. And a good, good place to start off your research is listening to the BBC Sounds podcast, The Missing Crypto Queen, which is, I believe, an eight part podcast um, with the final episode being an hour long, the first few episodes being 20 to 30 minutes. It is very in depth and the team over there um, went out to travel to different countries and interviewed a lot of people. Um, uh, that podcast is a really good place to start. Jump into this case if you've got a few hours to spare and you'll find yourself at three o'clock in the morning still researching this case and still finding out more information. If you find out any more information that I'm not included in this video, be sure to comment that down below. But what do you think of this case? Do you think Dr. Ruja is hiding out somewhere to evade the capture of the authorities? Or do you think she is being kidnapped or killed by competitors or perhaps a criminal gang who is involved? Let me know down in the comment section. And that's everything that I have for you in today's case. Thank you so much for watching this episode in my Curious Case series. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more true crime videos just like this one, and hit that bell icon so you can be notified every single time that I post a brand new true crime video. Be sure to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram. I'm trying to get to 10,000 followers on Instagram, so if you want to see more about my life, what goes on with me, and more channel updates, and sneak peeks at what's coming in the next video, Video, then be sure to go over to my Instagram and follow me there. And with all that being said, I'll see you in the next case.